Good morning, Raboisai. How's everybody doing? If you are in Chicago, good morning. You gotta wake up. Today's shir is sponsored. Lili Nishmas Imi, Ruspas Mordechai. And sponsored by Dove Schultz in honor of my father in law's 91st birthday, Rabbi Moshe Lerr of Far Rockaway. Ah! Far Rockaway, way to go. Um, Noam, you want to make a, a little speech now? You want to tell the other what's going on for the Seum? Not now, not the second, later. Go ahead, give it a, a minute. I'll give you a minute. Go. Was that Yoel at my door with Slurpees? Tell me the truth. Who's at the door? It was Yoel. I think everyone should have paused and go open the door. I would, but I can't. Is he, re- is he still there now? I'm, I'm three stories up. No, that's a, that's a 10 minute uh, ordeal. Next time. You should have given me the heads up. Besides, I don't know. I'm in self quarantine now. It might be a problem. What? I do. I don't have access. You probably have more access to those cameras than I do. Here's a quick email. A very, very not quick email. Benjamin Schwartz. We all, we're all very familiar with Benjamin Schwartz, but this was very touching. Although, it's probably not going to go anywhere, but it's very touching. Dear Rebelli, thank you for coming to New York over Sukkot. It was a true pleasure to meet you and get to see you in person. If you would have told me a year ago that I'd be learning Gemara daily, I never would have believed it. If you would have told me a year ago that I would be excited to attend a 12-15 and 2.15 till 2.15 a.m. Gemara Shir, I would have never believed it. Because of your Shir, I'm now learning Gemara daily and was so excited and was excited to attend the live Shir at midnight. I was actually disappointed when I couldn't make the live Shir the first few nights. That's how much your Shir has changed me. However, seeing the Shir live has given me an even greater perspective into what it really takes to make the Shir a success. The amount of time, work, effort you put into the Shir is unimaginable. I don't know how you do it. In addition, Everyone that works behind the scenes, they too must take up valuable time and help them to why Shear run smoothly. I therefore humbly request that everyone that learns from the Shear should donate to the Shear on a month. Look, seriously, it's not our style to solicit funds from everybody or even to hint to it. So therefore, don't take this as a hint. I'm just reading somebody's email and that's the end of it. Uh, People should donate. What? Is that Gary again? Gary, do me a favor, mute. You just click the monthly donation option. Kitzer, he says he set up something here. Can be five dollars, five hundred dollars, five thousand. But guys, can make sure. That we're... And he, he he set up a website. I'm not even going to say what it is. Was we'll set up a quick and easy way to donate to the shear. You just click the monthly donation, and it all goes the same place. I don't believe it. The leopard is climbing up the stairs. Okay. Obviously, bringing more members to learn Torah is the best option. However, this is the close second in my humble opinion. Shalom aleichem. We have a guest. 
Come here. I don't know if he's going to come. If he comes, he comes. Oh, come, come to her. First time in history that the Fyomi Magichir has a mini leopard. All right, go. It's a baby. It's only three months old. Something like that. Uh oh. This is not good because he's going after the wire. Did you see its ears? Hold on a second here. Oh. He just jumped up over here. Somebody has to. So who's coming up here? Yeah, come, please get him. Shkoyach. All right. Here's the. <laughs> he has very pointy ears. He's different than a regular cat. All right, fine. We got to learn some Torah here. Um, obviously, please let me know how to translate the remainder of the account. Wishing you much only the best, but young Schwartz, I've sent the meal like this before, but it seemed it got lost. So, seriously speaking, I really um, I'm touched by this that somebody wants to go out of their way. Whoever wants to donate money could talk to Benjamin Schwartz. We, it's not our policy to solicit or set up these kind of things. And with that, we will go right there. But it, it is very touching that people want to do and want to give. So, Yeshokayach Rebin Yaman. We are holding on Dafa and Beis. I just want to show you something I got yesterday from my good a relative of mine, Elchanan Feinstein. We daven for him. He's a Magachir here in Lincolnwood. And I, I was discussing about the Kapsulot in Israel. And it says like this, Beishamai's Erov Nightmare. I don't know if you've seen this picture yet, but this is what a capsula looks like. This is uh, inside of a yeshiva building. I mean, you could actually see Bakram learning in there. And these machitzes don't go up to the ceiling. This would, in fact, be a big nightmare. We're holding today's Daf Ein Gimel. The last few words on Daf Ein Beis, Ahmed Beis, Mai Mokoim Dira. So let me pose this question to you. And don't think I'm crazy. If you go to Eretz Yisrael, you go to the uh, Waldorf for Shabbos. Are you allowed to carry in the lobby of the Waldorf? No, everybody carries. But the question is, why? Isn't that, isn't that lobby of Rosh Hashanah So you have a bunch of rooms, and they're open into a chatzar called a lobby. That's basically what a, what a chatzar is, no? We all share a chatzar. All the rooms share a lobby. What gives us the right to carry in that lobby? So for that, we have to see the Gemara right here. The first line will answer it, basically. My Mokoim Dira. So yesterday we had the story, the guy had five Chatzeros, and does he have to make an Erev in all the Chatzeros? It's just one Chatzer. We said, the Chatzer that he lives in. What is the Chatzer that he lives in? My Mokoim Dira. So Machloikis. Rav Omar, Tapa Vayim Gimel, Mokoim Pito. Basically, the place where you eat bread, so the place that you eat. So therefore, when it comes to a hotel, we all eat in the dining room. That's where we eat. So Mamela, that's our makam. Or let's say a kibbutz. Everybody, uh, I don't even know if they exist anymore, but a typical kibbutz. You live here and there, but we all get together. We all eat in this one dining room. That creates the makam dira. That's the makam. Wherever you eat, the dining room. Ushmul Omar, Mokim Lino. It's not based on the dining room, it's based on where you sleep on the bedroom. Meisve. Haroyim, the shepherds, Vakayotzim, those who guard the figs, Vaburgonim, and Burgonim are like the huts we have in the Mesech Sukkah. Vishoymri Peirois, and those who watch the fruit. Bizman Shedarkum Lolin. What does it say? It has to do with lina, with sleeping. Bizman shedarkam lolim ba'ir, when they sleep in the city, harem kan then they're like city folk. Bizman shedarkam lolim ba'sodah, and if they sleep in the field, yesh lam alpayim l'chol ruach. So it has nothing to do with eating, it has nothing to do with where your dining room is, it has to do with where your bedroom is. Says the Gemara Hosom, anan tzahada di mamtulu rifta hosom tfei nichlu. So we're, we're starting with this idea that we know what the person is thinking. The person, 
would rather him bring the bread. He doesn't, okay, so he's sleeping out in the field. Now it happens to be in the field, there's no food. There's no kitchen in the field. So he has to trek back to where people are eating, and he eats there. So what's his main place? Where does he want to be? Does he want to be in the dining room in the city? No. He wants to be in a field. He's on a camping trip. But there's no food there. If you would bring him a sandwich to his camping site, he would eat it there. He prefers to eat it in the camping site. So Mamela, his Mokim Dira, is in the Sada, in the camping site. We're going to see that Svar again later. Omer Avi Yosef, I believe that Mesech Ervin has this the most. That's, I don't know, I didn't really do search, uh, research today, but look, we had it a bunch of times. I don't know, maybe five times in Mesech Ervin, where the Gemara tells us again that Rabbi Yosef got sick when he was older and he forgot his learning. And he tells his favorite student, Abaya, I never heard this pshat that it, it has to do with the dining room. I don't know such a thing. Omer Le Abaya, yes. I'll remind you. And I'll remind you on what you told it to us. By the way, Eli and Yisrael Goldstein, I bought that device, I hooked it up, so I have another type of Wi-Fi. So if YouTube, I got an email just before Sheer that the YouTube wasn't good last night. So if the YouTube is not very good, let me know, and I could switch it over to this at and I don't know if it will be better, hopefully. What? It's good, but you told me it was good yesterday, and I got a, an email saying it wasn't very good. It fr- freezes up, whatever. All right, Givaldig. Rabbi Yosef Ehrman, Shom Aleichem. Everybody look down there, you'll see Yosef Ehrman. He's known as my twin. He looks exactly like me. At my son's bar mitzvah, as everybody knows, people giving him gifts, and of course he kept it. Why would, so you know what I did? I went to his son's bar mitzvah. It's not a problem. He thought he was uh, a grace of chacham. I know I do the same thing. Anyway, right? So we just had this. You have a father and his children, and the children eat by the father. So each one needs an Erev, Amrin Allah, Shema Amin Allah, Makim Lina Goyrem. And we said, oh, just like we said yesterday, you see from here that it has to do with where you sleep. Otherwise, if they're eating by their father on the dining room table, why do they have to make an Erev for each and every one? Obviously because they go, after they finish the meal, they each go to their own little house. So they have to bring their own Erev. Vahamis Allah, Allah, Om Rav Yudom Rav, Bimekhabli Pras Shalu. No. What we're talking about is that each and every one gets a meal in his house. So in fact, their dining room is in their own little high school. And therefore, they have to bring five different Eruvim. Remember that? That was from yesterday. So, what is the difference if it's Samuch al Shulchan Aviyam, or if they get food, each one, individu- each one individually? So if they get, if they're on their father's table, then they're considered one, right? And if there's other people there in the Chatzar, then all they need is one Erev. If they all live in one house, like a typical family today, all the kids live in one house, the Samach HaShulchan Aviv, so that one house requires one Erev, everybody else in the Chatzar brings one Erev, and that whole house brings one Erev. If they're individuals that get food from their father, and there's another person in the Chatzar, then each one of the kids is going to have to bring their own Eruv. Another thing that we're going to see soon, and the Rishonim talk about it, this idea, this concept of Samuch HaShulchan Avim, or Mekabun Pras, I should say, Mekabun Pras means they get food delivered to their house, that only applies to very special connected individuals, like sons, like a wife, like a slave, like a Talmud. But anybody else, if I deliver food to you because I'm a food delivery guy, that doesn't mean that you have a connection to me. You have to be related somehow. You have to have a connection, a physical connection, like a slave to his master. <clears throat> okay. I think there's only about 60 seconds, about the split second. I don't know if you should change it, but it does it. I don't think it's the connection. What happens every 60 seconds, it stops for a second? For a split second, like a little time free. By the way, when you upload it afterwards to YouTube, it smooths out a lot of that stuff. So I don't know if that's, that's the... But keep, keep a good eye on it. Do me a favor because 
I, I want to change it, but I'm a little scared to, to try a new device, a complete new... This, this is what Ellie Dykeman had in New York. It seems okay. I, I hooked up to it, but I'm not sure if, you know, how good it is up here. Anyway, I'll try it out tomorrow. Torah We're talking about one of the unluckiest people in the world. Mi shiyeshloi chomesh noshim. Somebody that's married to five women. Oy vavoy. Mikabalis prasmen ba'aleim. And they receive from him every single day food. V'chamisho avodim mikabalim prasmen rabeim. Or five servants who get food from their master. So we have a machlekes. Rabbi Yehuda ben Beseiro matir benoshim voiser ba'avodim. So Rabbi Yehuda ben Beseiro says basically what we would think. A wife, ishta kegufoi, so she's more attached to her husband, so she's one with her husband. It's considered one house, one household, one eruv. However, slaves, servants, what other words, slaves, servants, they require an eruv per evid. Rabbi Yehuda ben Bava, Rabbi Yisai, stam a question. Who's the Rabbi Yehuda in our Mishnah? Is it Rabbi Yehuda ben Becerra or Rabbi Yehuda ben Bava? Neither. Somebody else. Rabbi Yehuda ben Ila. Anyway, so Rabbi Yehuda ben Becerra says, Matir ben Noshim ve'oyser ba'avodim. Rabbi Yehuda ben Becerra says, Sorry, he says, Noshima one, five. Rabbi Yehuda ben Baba, Matir ba'avodim, ve'oyser ben Noshim. He says, Fakert. Since the servant is connected to the master, Bimamanis, like he owes him something, so Mamela, he's one with the master. Women, on the other hand, not so much. It's hard to understand, but that's what he says. That slaves have more of a connection, Kaviyachal, not because, because the, the wife doesn't owe the husband anything, really. What does she owe? Adar Rabbi, this is good for feminists. What? There's no connection. They, a, a servant, he's Meshubah to the, to the master. He owes him. Fine. Omar Rav, my time the Rabbi Yehudah Baba. Daniel, even though he wasn't really in the palace at all times, he was out, he was learning, whatever he was doing, but it's considered as if he's in the palace, as if he's in, within the gate, at all times. So Mamela is part of that, and one area of suffices for Daniel and the king. Says the Gemara, Pshito, Benet, Salaviv, Kedamaro. Like we had before, that a son... In the same chatzar as his father, he receives food from his father. You don't need to make another Erev. He's one with the father. That we just had a second ago. Which one is considered more connected? The wife to the husband or the servant to the master? What about Talmud Eitzel Rabbi Mai? A Talmud... Which we know halachically is like a son, so you have to be Muhammad a Rebbe even more than a father. Like a son, and he eats by the Rebbe. He receives food from the Rebbe. What's halacha? Tashma, the Rav Bey Rebbe, when Rav was in the yeshiva of Rebbe Chia, Omar, we don't have to make an Erev Shari, we're part of the Rebbe Chia, and therefore, we don't have to make an Eruv, so therefore Talmud doesn't have to make an Eruv when, he with his, when he's with his Rebbe. Rebbe Chia by Rebbe, Bey Rebbe, when Rebbe Chia was in the yeshiva of the famous Rebbe, Omar, Rebbe, we don't have to make an Eruv, because we are part of Rebbe. Abaya asks Rabbo. Now this question is going to be very familiar to us, because we just had it yesterday. You have five people in a chotzer and they gathered the Eruv all together. Everything is set. So now we have one Eruv from five people. Now, so how does it work? You have a chotzer, right? I don't know if I have a good picture of this. But, let's see. Nah. Well, let's just say, uh, for, for argument's sake. These guys got their Eruv together. So now they could carry over here in the chatzar. But then they decided they also want to carry next door. So now they have to do another Erev. They have to be Ma'arev with these guys so that they could go from chatzar to chatzar. 
First, they made an Eruv between themselves, just to carry over here in the green spot. One green, you need to make an Eruv. Because it's two people, they ask on each other. Well, they want to make another Eruv. Well, once they gathered the Eruv, is it considered one? And now one of the people of the Chatzar could take that Eruv and be the Shliach, bring it over to the neighbors and be Ma'ariv with another Chatzar. Or no, it's two separate people doing it with another Chatzar. So each person has to bring it over. We had this question yesterday. So why is Abaya asking the question as if he never heard it? Says Rashi, he never heard it. Or he's asking for a resolution to the question. He wants to know what the Psaq is. So he tells him, once they five people gather together, they make one, like, like the, the, the Ramah says, they made one chala out of five pounds of flour. So they take that one chala and they bring it to the next area. They make an area with the next guy, with the next door neighbors, the next door chotzer. Ask the Gemara, so he asked him, Abai asks, what about brothers? Brothers, if there's nobody else living in that chotzer, they don't have to make the area. So it's as if they have an Eruv already. So it's as if the brothers gathered an Eruv. It's as if they gathered the Eruv. When they go to the next door neighbor, we learned that the brothers, each one has to give individually another Eruv. So why don't we just say that the brothers are like one. Before anybody shows up, they're like one. They're one mishpacha. So one of the brothers should take the Eruv and bring it to the, to the neighbor. But we don't say that. We say that each and every person has to bring their own Eruv. Why? Oh, the reason is because there's other people living with the brothers. In that Chatzar, it's not a private Chatzar just for those brothers. There's somebody else living there. And, why, and so what? Like we mentioned yesterday, the migui, the hani asri, hani nami asri. The concept of migui in a different way, not the migui of Baba Kama, but migui, since. Since the brothers are also, in other words, the people that live in the Chatzar make it also for the brothers to carry without an Eruv. If those other people weren't there, the brothers are one mishpacha. But since the people are there, it makes it also for the brothers. So now once the brothers become asr and they have to make an Eruv, hachanami, hani nami asri. So it continues. So, if they, if they weren't usher at all, great. But the problem is that the brothers already have to make an error. Once they have to make an error, each one has to bring it outside to the next, to the next chater. Let's say nobody lives with the brothers. They're all by themselves. So, in a chanami, one brother will bring it to the next door neighbor. You hear? Because if nobody else is living with them, now they're one. They're considered one. One, one shliach could bring it for one guy and bring it next door. But since there's a, there's, a, there's a stranger living with them, so for that stranger, now they have to each one make an Eruv. Oh, now they're not one anymore. Each and every one has to bring it to the next door neighbor. And I'll prove it to you. Acher. It, this applies when they bring their Eruv to another place. But if you bring the Eruv to them, nobody else lives with them. That's what we learned. So you see that the reason why they have to, be, they have to make an Eruv is because there's another person li- living with them. Question. B'nai Rav, you have Yeshiva Bachar. Da'achli nahama bebago. Very nice picture from Kol Halashan. Mamish, an Israeli yeshiva building. One of these beautiful, new, with the uh, Evan Yerushalmi. And they're eating bread over here. I got to tell you the story. I, I'm Mamish, I'm losing it. I don't remember what I said or what I didn't say, but I got to tell you the story either way. One of my favorite stories. I'm sure those who know me have heard this story. Unbelievable story. About the time, it was like 2008, I brought my son to... Yeshiva Norfolk, Virginia. And in Norfolk, the, the Beis Medrash back then, the Beis Medrash is one place, and the dormitory was a mile away. So they said, oh, you got to get your son a bike. So I said, okay, I'll give him a bike. So they said, you know, um, 
we have to we have to bring all the bacharim into the shear room, and we're going to start yeshiva today. We're going we're gonna, the first the first shear. So I said, okay, great. My son goes into the room to the yeshiva to learn, to to to, to be introduced to his class, his rebbe. So I run and get him a bike. I go to the bike store, get him a bike, bring it back. I come back to the yeshiva building, and the door's locked. There's a combination. I knock, nobody opens. So I want to stand outside. So I go to the backyard, and I go to the back door. It's locked. So I see there's a fire escape. So I go up the fire escape, I go, climb one floor, door's locked. So I climb to the second floor, and I see that the door is slightly ajar, but it's like not opening. So I figure, you know, it's B'Sha'as of Chak, I'll give it a little push, like a geshmaka push, I'll be able to get in. So I, I take a running start, I, go, I take back three steps, I go one, two, three with my shoulder, poof, the door flings open. Now, in slow motion, this is what happened. I lose my balance, and I come tumbling into this room. And as I tumble into the room, there's a tremendous alarm that goes off. And at the same time, there's flashing lights for those who can't hear. It's a sophisticated building. And as I gather my balance, I turn around, and I see my son with this first day in shear, his magachir is there, the whole shear turns around, and they see this clown flying into the room. I turn around and I said, Hi, I'm Aaron's father. See you later. And I ran out the door and I left him there to cook with the bush and the bazillion that only a father could do for his son. And anyways, yeah, I'm, very, I'm a big professional in that. So Baruch Hashem. Anyway, so it, why I'm reminded because this yeshiva is the same thing. Here's the yeshiva building. It's over here. And you get to eat all the way here, a mile away. You need a bike to get here. So I asked him, Shailo, Bnei Bnei Rav, the Achli Naham Abagav also Bebaisi Bebei Rav. And they sleep in the base medrash. So they eat. It's unbelievable if you think about it. In those days, they used to learn in the base medrash and sleep in the base medrash. There was, there was, you only left the base medrash to eat a little bit, eat, and anything that had to do with food, the processing of food. But you eat, you come back to your marriage, you need, you need to sleep a little bit, you just call all these things that we had in the base marriage. People are sleeping, people are learning. Anyway, so the sleeping in the base marriage, they're eating in this bag of place off campus. When you measure the tchum for them, in do you go from the base marriage? In other words, the question is, do we go by the dining room or do we go by the bedroom? It goes by the bedroom where they sleep. What about a person? Any individual, the whole Masech, a guy wants to go extend his tchum. So what does he do? Before Shabbos, he runs out of the, out of the city and he places his challah somewhere. And then he has a paim amo. He has 2,000 amo from that challah, from that eruv. But where is he going to sleep? If he's smart, he goes back home. So if he put his Erev down and he came back home, he still, he doesn't lose his Tchum, he still gets 2,000 amas from his bread. So again, what do you see? That it goes by the dining room, not by the bedroom. We have Eidos, we know what a person is thinking. Look, the guy wants to go westbound. So what does he do? He takes his, his chala, he puts it uh, 2,000 amas out of the city, west. And from there he wants to continue west. He has no reason to go back home and sleep. We know where he wants to go. We know the direction. The direction is west. It happens to be that he needs a good, nice, comfortable bed. But where does he want to be? If, you, if he had an option, he'd rather have a hotel room right where his area is and continue on, on his journey from that point on. He doesn't want to go home. Oh. Uh, so Mamela, what's important is where he placed the Zeruf, not where he's sleeping. by the Yeshiva Bacharim, Anan we could testify to the fact that they don't want to ride their bike to the dining room. They want it in the base medrash. Just they can't. The food is out there, so that's why they walk there. So it has to do with where they want to be. Where every individual wants to be at that point, that's where his makim dira is. 
בואי נראה מה בא חומר, מה רב חיסדום. אב ובנוי, הרב ותלמידוי, we have a father and a son, or a Rebbe and a, and a student, are they considered like multiple people or like Yechidim? In other words, so Rashi explains that if you're, if you have an inner Chatzar and an outer Chatzar, so if you have the inner people that must make an Eruv and they don't make an Eruv, they Aser the outer Chatzar because they have a Drisas regal there, they can walk through the outer Chatzar and since they didn't make an Eruv, the fact that they're allowed to walk through the front chatzar, they make it, they ruin it for the, for, for the front chatzar. So what is a father and his children considered? Is he considered a, like a bunch of people that have to make an Eruv? And since they didn't make an Eruv, they ruin it? Or they don't have to make an Eruv? Another question. What about between themselves? They themselves, with inside, they, nobody else is there. Do they have to make their own Eruv? So do we consider the father lives in one chatzar, the, the child lives in another chatzar, do we consider it as two chatzars? We know that in order for a mavoi to be able to, to put a lechi or a koira on a mavoi, you need at least two houses per chatzar, you need and two chatzars per mavoi. So are there two chatzars considered one chatzar or two chatzars? It's a father and a son. We learned it. Abu Bnoi, Harav et Almidoi, Bizman Sheni Moim the Yorin. If nobody else lives with them, Harem Ki Yechidim, they're considered individuals. They don't have to make an Erev for, for themselves, for the little Mishbacha. Umavishalem Nita Belechi the Kaira, and their Mavoi is Nita Belechi the Kaira. By the way, if you think about it, does an individual that's using a mavoi, does he need a lechi and a kaira? Just, just him. It's him himself and a, and a mavoi. Yes. Because the, the mavoi itself needs a lechi and a kaira. In order to carry there. Now there's another thing that you have to make a sheet of mavois. If all the people from the chatzor want to carry into the mavoi, they have to make a sheet of. Like an Erev. But every, every mavoi needs a lechi. Alright. Zog the Mishnah. Chomesh chatzero is ptuchois zulazu. You have five chatzeres open to each other. So the way the, the Mishnah reads is all these chatzeres open into a mavoi. Not only that, they open up into each other. So as a quick review, here you have two houses that are open into a chatzer. For In order for you to carry just from your house into the green, you need the, this blue line, just the blue line, you need an Eruv. That's called Eruv Chatzeros. In order for you to carry from this Chatzer to this Chatzer through this door, you need an Eruv called Eruv Chatzeros. Now in order for you to carry from the grass into the alleyway, that you need a Shituf. You need a Shituf Mavais. So we have Eruv Chatzeros, the blue lines, to go from Chatzer to Chatzer or from the house to the Chatzer. And to go from the Chatzin to the Mavi, you need a Shituf. So this case, according to the way we're reading the Mishnah, later on we'll see, Rav says that there's no opening over here. There's opening through and through, and opening to the Mavi. Erivu b'chatzerois b'loi nishtatvu b'mavoi. So basically the Mishnah has four cases. Case number one is that they made an Eruv to the Chatzar, but they didn't do an Erev to the Mavoy. So the halacha is that they are mutter to go from Chatzar to Chatzar. They could go this direction, but they cannot go into the Mavoy because they didn't make a sheet of Mavoy's. Erev b'chatzer is the Mishnah of Mavoy. Mutarim b'chatzer is v'asurim b'mavoy. What does that tell me? What does this tell me? This tells me that this Mishnah must be going according to the Manda Amar as we know him as Remeir, that says that an Eruv doesn't work for a Mavoy. You need both. You need an Eruv and a Shituf. Because if one would work, you're saying that the Eruv is good enough for them to walk in the Chatzar, so it should be good enough for them to go to the Mavoy. They forgot to do the Shituf. Meir holds you need both. We are turning to Daf and Gimel and Beis in memory of Dr. Listau's mother. Shendel Bat Aaron Hirsch and Brocha 
by Dr. Alan Listel. So the Gemara. Vim nishtat for b'mavoi. And if they made a sheet of mavois, case number two, nishtat for b'mavoi. Over here they only did an air of chatzeres and no sheet of. Over here they did a sheet of in the mavoi. L'chayra, they didn't do an air of chatzeres. We're going to see in the Gemara. But right now let's just read it simple. They didn't do an air of chatzeres, but they did do a sheet of. They did one out of the two. What's the halacha? Evu. This is a major problem. This L'chari goes according to Rabbanon who say that just a shituf is enough also for Chatzeres. So if they just did a shituf, they could not only do what a shituf does is the red lines go from the Chatzer into the Mavoy, but they can also do the blue, which is going from Chatzer to Chatzer and from the house into the Chatzer. Next case. They did everything properly. They did two. They did an Eruv, and they did a Shituv. One guy, one guy out of these ten guys, there's an ex on his house, he forgot. He forgot. Okay. So what's the halacha? So there's two things that could happen here. Either one guy in the Chatzar forgot, or one guy in the Mavi forgot. In other words, you have a Chatzar open to a Mavi, another Chatzar, Somebody forgot in that chatzor. So case number three is, and one of the guys forgot and he didn't do an Eruv. You're allowed to go everywhere. Green case. You're allowed to go from the chatzor to the Mavoy and from the Mavoy to the, uh, and from the chatzor to the Mavoy, from the house to the chatzor. Everything is great. Because only one guy forgot. And the Gemara is going to explain, let me just cheat and tell you now, the Gemara is going to explain this case because the whole point of the Eruv is that the children shouldn't forget. And over here, the children won't forget because everybody did an Eruv. Just one uh, forgetful guy forgot to do it, that's not going to make the children forget. And then Mela, the Shittuf is enough, the Eruv is enough, and that's it. Okay. What happens if not one of the Chatzar guys, but one of the Mavoy people, he was not Mishnatev. Then it's a little different. Then you're only allowed to go in the Chatzar, and you're not allowed to go in the Mavoy, because one of the Mavoy guys forgot. And the Mishnah finishes off, So basically what the Mishnah is saying is, that the relationship between the mother and the chatzar is like a relationship between a chatzar and a house. Don't think that a house is a Rishus HaYachid and a chatzar is a Rishus HaRabim. And that's the Isser to go from one to the other. But let's say a mavoi and a chatzar, they're the same type of Rishus. They're both Rishus HaRabim. They're both used by, by multiple people. So therefore, it's not a big deal to go from the chatzar to the mavoi. No, you need a, a sheet of mavois to go from a chatzah to mavoi, just like you need an air of chatzeris to go from a house, which is a shusayachid, to the chatzah, which is a shusaram. The same exact thing. Yeah? Nachamal? It was okay? Okay. Zog the Gemara, Mani, Mani Rib Meir here. So, the first part of the Mishnah, blue, that they, they, they did an Eruv, but not a Shituf. We said, the Allah is, they can't go in the Mavi. In other words, you need two things. You need an Eruv and a Shituf. Who does it go according to? It must go according to Rebbe Meir. Okay? The, the Gemara is going to rip this apart step by step to see how could this Mishnah align itself with the Rebbe Meir. How does it fit? The Omar, being an Eruv, being a Shituf, you need two things. And that's why, since they only did an Eruv, no good. It only works for the chutzner, not for the mavoi. Eimem mitziyasa vim ishtafu ba mavoi. Red case. Did as a shituf. How could it work for two things? That must be who rabbanan. So this is remeir. This is rabbanan. Problematic. Vim ishtafu ba mavoi. Don't make a mekah. No son of rabbanan. Down in bechadus agya. It's enough to do one shituf, and that's why if they only did a shituf and not a erev, you could carry from your house to the chutzner and from the chutzner to the mavoi. So the gemara like kashu. It's not such a problem to say this is Rameir, this is Rabbana. It's both Rameir. This red case is not talking about they only did a Shituf. 
they also did a shituf. They did a eruv and they did a shituf. And Mimela, you could carry in the. Oh. What's confusing about this Gemara, and that's why I made this chart, only the fact that the Gemara uses the word ration and seifa very loosely and calls every case a ration and a seifa, it, it could really confuse you. So aim a seifa. We just said seifa. We said the red is the seifa. No. We're talking about a different seifa. Aim a seifa. Green. This is the new, our new seifa. The green is the new seifer. One of the people from the chotzer didn't make an eruv. Mutarim kamikan, you allowed to carry everywhere. Now, so now we'll take it step by step. Very very simple gemara. Hey dami, what's the case? One guy in a chotzer forgot. Doesn't he ruin it for everybody? Think about it. One guy forgot. Everything we learned up until this point is if one guy forgets, no eruv. What's the eitz out of this? Bittel, relinquishing your property. So let's think about it. Hey, Chidami, either like bottle, if he didn't relinquish, I might mutar him. There's no reason in the world why everybody should be muta to carry. El of the bottle. You have to say that there's relinquishment. Aim a seifa. Uh, we just called green seifa. No, there's a new seifa, purple. Purple is the new seifa. So three, we, we call three of them already seifa, by the way. So what's the seifa? Aim a seifa. If one of the Mavi people, forget about the Chatzar people, one of the Mavi, like you have a you have a Chatzar open to the same Mavi as you, and the guy forgot to make a Shitov, Mutarim Bechatzer is Vasurim B'Mavi. Wait a minute, you just told me that the guy was Mavatal. You had a, you, you were forced to say, you were forced to say that he was Mavatal, right? Pshitu the Mavatal. You have to say that the guy relinquished, otherwise no reason in the world why he should be able to use this air. Okay, so he relinquished his property. So purple also has to relinquish. Vida bottle, am I a swim by So he relinquishes his property. So why is everybody else to walk in the Mavi? And if you'll tell me that because this is a Mavi case, not a Chatzar case, purple, Remeir holds, when, the whole thing is Remeir, Remeir holds that you cannot relinquish your Rishus in a Mavi. That's not true. Remember when we had Rim Gamliel and the Tzduki? So it says over there, Rim Gamliel says, the tzduki was mevatos rishos. Run, do whatever you need to do immediately before he takes it back. But you see the idea that he could be mevatos rishos. The remeir in Rim Gamliel, remeir said that's a pshat. Yeah, el abshita delay bottle. So he must say that he was not mevatos. Where this case, purple. Oh, and save the delay bottle. Reisha. Now all of a sudden we're calling green reisha. Okay. A minute ago we called green a seifa, but now compared to the purple, green is a ratio. So if the purple he wasn't mevatel, so green he also wasn't mevatel. Somebody forgot to make an Erov, you're allowed, you're permitted, everybody's permitted to use the chatzar. What's going on here? One guy forgot an Erov out of the whole chatzar, and everybody's allowed to use the chatzar. Why? He wasn't mevatel. You're telling me it has to be similar to purple. Purple, there's no beetle. Mamela forces us to say green is no beetle. Green is no beetle. So explain to me how it's possible that there's a guy in the Chatzar who wasn't Ma'arev and everybody's allowed to use it. Reisha v'seifa Rebbe Now, we're going back. <laughs> Rabbi said it's a little confusing. Reisha now means something else completely. Blue. Not green. Blue. The real, real, real ratio. Okay, that's why I made this chart, because I think to explain it would be murder. The blue, when they were married, when they were Mishtatav, we already established here, look, Remeir, nobody argues on that. It has to be Remeir, because Remeir holds that you have to do a Shituf and an Eruv, and he didn't do both. He only did one out of the two, and therefore you can only use the Eruv, the Chatzeris, and not the Shituf. You can't use the Mavu. Okay, so this is Remeir. The Seifa, purple, the Seifa of the Seifa of the Seifa is Remeir. Great. Mitziyasa Rabbanon. So how are you going to explain the green? The reason why I can carry air is because all I need is a shituf. So what if the guy forgot an Eruv? I have a shituf. It's enough. According to Rabbanon, it's great. But that only goes according to Rabbanon. So the top and the bottom is Remeir. In the middle is going to be Rabbanon. That's very, very problematic. We hardly ever allow such a thing. Says the Gemara, oh, no. You're right. Kula Remeir. All four go according to Remeir. Everything's great. The time of mind, like I explained before. 
But I am a Remeir being an Erev, being a Shitov. Why does Remeir require both? Not because halachically you really need both. That the children shouldn't forget about an Erev. And since over here most of the residents, they did an Erev, only one guy, a forgetful guy, forgot. Mamela, the kids aren't going to forget about Eruv, so we don't have that Gzeira, and therefore the Shituf is enough. A little bit more. Omer Avido, Rav, Leitone, Psuches, Zulazu. Oh. So Rav doesn't hold of this at all. He holds that there's walls between every Chatzar. The only opening is into the Mavoy. Mavoy, Mavoy, Mavoy. Some people say Rav Kahana also said in the name of Rav, you don't need openings, they're closed. It's not Rav that said that they're not open, it's Rav Kahana that said it's not open. Okay. Rav Yosef, so Abayi tells us, Rabbi Rav Yosef, my time of the Rav, what's the Svara? Now listen to this, Rabbi Yosef. It's just a Havamina, but it's very hard to understand. Kosovar. In other words, Rav is going to hold that you must take your Eruv and Shpatsir, do a little Tiyul, go from your house outside into the Mavoy and bring it into your friend's house. But if you go from a, a secret passage between your two Chatzerois, that doesn't work. Why? I don't know. But that's what Rav holds. In order for this shituf to work, you have to show that it's a shituf. You have to bring it, parade it right through the mavoy and show, oh, I'm taking the mavoy and everybody's part of this mavoy. How? I bring it and I go through this red line. Take it out of my house, go through the mavoy, bring it into the next guy's house. And that's why he was geyser that if there's any opening between the, the chatzerahs, no good. The Gemara is going to ask a bunch of bomb questions on this and eventually say that it's just a havamina. Right? We had this, this thing. There was a barrel in the middle. And, and, and there were, there were shutfim. They, they bought the barrel just to drink wine. We had the case the other day. And then they decided later on to use the, the barrel of wine for, for an Eruv. No, but they didn't parade the, the barrel of wine through the Mavi. The barrel's already in one place. It's already in their backyard. Says, okay, you're going to be forced to say... Yeah, they lifted up the barrel and they started parading it through the Mavoy. Imagine if you have all these guys, they have to go in and out, in and out, they have to parade it from house to house. So one guy, we learned, could take a barrel and say, this barrel of wine is for everybody. This is all for everybody. So, but, but they, no, no, nobody paraded it. It's one guy that put it down. You have to say that they did parade it. What if I decide that a piece of bread in that basket should be the Eruv? What, it's not going to work? I have to parade it? And if you're going to say yes, and this is in the name of Rav, and this is the bomb cash that the Gemara ends with. It got dark. So any bread that's right there and then, you can make it into Erov, you can make it into Shituf. If you're in the Chatzar, it works as a Shituf. If you're in the house, it works as, a, as an Erov. The bottom line is that you cannot parade it. Oh, why can't you parade it? Maybe they did parade it. So for this, you have to see like the last, I'll, I wanted to read the whole Taisus, but since we're late, look at the last, last words in Taisus. Because Taisa says, we're talking about one guy providing food for everybody. Mimela, you don't have the right to take his food and parade it in a mavoy. It's not yours. It's Ruven's food. He's a, he, he, he invited you for a meal. It only works when it's yours to begin with. And Mimela, it doesn't work over here. Ela time the Rav, the Kosovar, a mavoy nito belechev ekoiro. Rav holds that you need, in order for Lechi and Kaira, we're going to talk about it tomorrow, in order for Lechi and Kaira to work, you need two houses and two Chatzerahs open to Amavoy, but if they're open to each other, 
then a lechi and a kaira don't work. We'll talk about it tomorrow. Have a wonderful, wonderful day, Rabbi Isai. Shira Malois. All right. <laughs>